For more physics related videos, please subscribe. In this video, we're going to ask the question, how heavy is light? And essentially, we're going to do exactly what's in this picture. If we put a bunch of light in a box, how much does that box weigh? I've rated the physics level in this video as easiest. In a previous video, I asked if light has mass. And I explained that it kind of depends what you mean by mass because the term mass has been used in various ways over the history of physics. In summary, light has no rest mass, which is the mass of an object at rest. Light is in fact never at rest, so it has no rest mass. But I explained that light does have inertial mass, which it turns out is just its energy divided by c squared, c being the speed of light. Then there's gravitational mass. In Einstein's theory of gravity, which is general relativity, light has gravitational mass in the sense of the mass that creates a gravitational field, meaning the mass that will cause things to orbit around it. And that mass, turns out, is also equal to the energy over c squared. But in Newton's theory of gravity, the gravitational mass is not only the mass that creates a gravitational field, but it's also the mass that feels one. And in general relativity, the concept of a mass that feels a gravitational field doesn't exist. So we have to figure out what exactly does it mean for an object to weigh a certain amount. So let's imagine we're sitting on the Earth and we place a scale on the ground. And then we place a box on top of that scale. The weight of the box will now be measured by that scale. But what exactly is the scale measuring? It's measuring the force that the scale has to impart upwards on the box in order to keep the box in the same place. And that way we can write as mg, where m is the mass of the box and g is the local acceleration due to gravity. Local meaning right around where the box is. If you move far away from the Earth, the value of g might change. So when I say the local gravity, I'm picking a region where g doesn't change, or at least the change is not noticeable. In a little bit, we're going to talk about what the conditions for that are exactly. So this is a very important concept. The weight is the force that the scale imparts on the box. It is not something that is tied to the box. We tend to think of our weight as something intrinsic to us, but it's not. When we stand on a scale, our weight is whatever force the scale is pushing up against our feet to prevent us from falling through the earth. To better exemplify what I mean, instead of having this scale sitting on the surface of the Earth, let's instead imagine that it's falling through the air with the box on top of it. Now, what does the scale read? Well, the box and the scale are both falling together, so there is no force being imparted on the box by the scale, so the scale measures zero. If you're in free fall, you are weightless. If you're finding this video interesting so far, please be sure to like and subscribe, maybe share it with a few friends. You've probably all experienced this. If you are in an elevator, when it goes down, you feel a little lighter. And when it goes up, you feel a little heavier. Now, an elevator doesn't fall at free fall rate, at least hopefully not. So your weight in the elevator is not zero, but it's less than when the elevator is at rest. Okay, so now that we understand what weight is, it's the force imparted on the box by the scale. What happens if we now fill this box up with a bunch of light? with a bunch of photons. Does the box get lighter, does it get heavier, or does it stay the same? Again meaning, how does the upward force required to support this box change now that it's filled with light? To answer this question, we'll start off by asking, how does the weight change if you just have one photon? So let's imagine a photon travels from the top of the box to the bottom of the box, and it's got some energy E. Well, photons don't only carry energy, they also carry momentum. And the momentum of a photon is its energy divided by the speed of light. So this means that if a photon is emitted at the top of this box downwards, it's going to impart a momentum upwards on the box in order to conserve momentum. And when it gets to the bottom of the box, it's going to hit the box in a downward direction, so it's going to impart momentum downwards on the box. Now, at first glance, it would seem that the net momentum imparted on the box is zero, because initially, the photon pushes the box up, and then when it gets to the bottom, it pushes it back down. And this is all taking place in a very short amount of time. But actually, as the photon travels down, something funny happens to it. Einstein showed that when photons travel in a gravitational field, their energy changes. 
So if the photon drops in the gravitational field, it gains energy. And the language we use is we say it's blue shifted. This is because blue light is more energetic than red light. So if you gain energy, we call that a blue shift. And similarly, if you ran this backwards and were emitting a photon from the bottom that went up to the top, it would be red shifted, meaning it would lose energy. So the whole thing is reversible. This is essentially the same thing as if you throw a baseball up in the air. The baseball goes up, it slows down, so it loses energy, and when it comes back down, it speeds up, picking up energy again. Same thing with the photon. If it goes up in the gravitational field, it loses energy. When it comes down, it gains energy. So that means that the energy of the photon is not conserved in a gravitational field. Instead, it's a different quantity that's conserved according to Einstein's theory of gravity. And what is conserved is the energy times this quantity 1 plus gh over c squared. So if you take this entire quantity, the energy times this 1 plus g, the gravitational acceleration, times h, which is the height of the photon divided by c squared, and compare that to the quantity at a different location, location 2 in this case, you'll get the same number. So at the top of the box and the bottom of the box, these two quantities have to be equal. And this holds assuming that g is constant. It's the same everywhere in the box, so locally. Now, instead of having height 1 and height 2, let's make things a little easier and call the bottom of the box height 0, and just say that the box has a total height of h. So now this expression can be simplified as e prime will equal e times 1 plus gh over c squared, where e prime is the energy at the bottom of the box, and e is the energy at the top of the box. The reason we don't have a 1 plus gh over c squared for the bottom of the box is that h is 0 at the bottom of the box. So now, getting back to what we mean by the local gravity, this expression will hold if the quantity gh over c squared is very small, much less than 1. If you take a look at the units of this, or the dimensions of this quantity gh over c squared, you'll find that it doesn't have dimensions. So for the purposes of this video, if this quantity is very small, that is the condition under which we can say that the local gravity is constant. So now we can use this information to figure out what is the weight of the photon. Now remember, weight is a force, and the definition of force is change in momentum over change in time. So here I'm writing the weight as F sub W, W for weight, and F to remind you that it's a force. So we have to figure out what the change in momentum is and the change in time is, and then we'll have the weight. Well, the change in time is easy, it's just the distance traveled by the photon divided by its speed, so that's going to be H divided by the speed of light. Now we have to find the change in momentum. The change in momentum is going to be the momentum imparted at the top when the photon is emitted, plus the momentum imparted at the bottom when the photon is absorbed. And remember that momentum is just the energy divided by C, the speed of light. So we're going to have that the change in momentum is E prime over C minus E over C. And it's minus because at the top, the momentum gets imparted upwards, and at the bottom, it gets imparted downwards. So they're in opposite directions. We can now substitute what E prime is in terms of E and simplify the algebra to get that the net change in momentum is going to be the energy of the photon when it's emitted times GH divided by C cubed. Now all that's left to do is divide by the change in time and simplify to get that the weight of the photon is its energy divided by C squared times the local gravitational acceleration. And since we can write the weight as the gravitational mass times g, comparing this with our answer, we find that the gravitational mass is equal to energy over c squared, which was the same as the gravitational mass that is responsible for creating a gravitational field, and it's the same as the inertial mass. Now, you may be thinking, well, we only did this for a photon that's traveling up and down. What if the photon is instead traveling side to side? In this case, the photon's height hasn't changed, so the energy on both sides is the same, and so the net momentum has to be zero. So it would seem that only photons traveling up and down have weight. Well, actually, that's not the case. In Einstein's theory of gravity, light is affected by gravitational fields, and the photon will not travel straight across. Instead, its trajectory will bend downwards. So now it gets a little bit complicated. 
not only will the photon be a little bit blue shifted, meaning it will gain some energy because it will hit the other side of the box at a lower height, but it's going to hit it at a funny angle. And so you have to keep track of the momentum in the horizontal direction and the momentum in the vertical direction. Now, I'm not going to actually do this because it's a little more involved and does require some knowledge of general relativity. Instead, I'm just going to tell you that when you work everything out, the net momentum in the left-right direction, in the horizontal direction, is zero. So there is no net force left and right. And the net force in the vertical direction also works out to E over C squared times G. So it doesn't matter which way the photon is traveling, its weight will always be E over C squared. So the photon can bounce around all it wants in every direction, which is what it will do if it's trapped in this box, and it will always have a weight E over C squared times G. And it turns out that this expression for the gravitational mass holds for everything, not just photons. The weight of any object at rest in a gravitational field is equal to its total energy divided by c squared times the local gravitational acceleration. Now this actually has some very interesting implications. If instead of filling the box full of photons, I just heated it up, well, it also would have more energy. So this implies that hotter objects are heavier because their gravitational mass has increased since it's e over c squared. And another way to convince you that that's the case the number of photons in the box is entirely determined by the temperature of the box. So increasing the number of photons is equivalent to increasing the temperature of the box and vice versa. Now the real question is, does this actually happen? Because this is a very nice theory and calculation, but ultimately what matters is, can it be observed? Well, in the case of a large box like this, it'd be very difficult to measure mainly because the extra weight from this E over C squared is so tiny compared to the mass of the box, or I should say specifically the rest mass of the box, that if you had an instrument that was capable of detecting that extra weight, it would almost certainly be able of detecting changes in the gravitational field due to the height of the box. And we've assumed here that the gravitational field is constant. So you would have to have a box that was extremely thin such that the instrument you're using, or the scale you're using, would detect this extra E over C squared times G in its weight without detecting the change in the gravitational acceleration across the very tiny height of the box. So for a macroscopic object that we're used to, it'd be very difficult to measure this. I don't think it's ever been done. If you know of an experiment where that's been done, please let me know in the comments. However, this can be detected with very small objects like atoms or nuclei. If you take two nuclei and fuse them together and in the process they emit some photons, you can then weigh this fused nucleus and you'll find out that its weight is less than the total weight of the individual nuclei when it wasn't fused. And how much will its weight have changed? Exactly by E over C squared of the emitted photons times G. So for very small objects like atoms and nuclei, this has been observed. If you enjoyed this video, you'll likely enjoy other videos of mine, so please be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for the release of future videos. And if you have any doubts or further questions, please leave them in the comments. I do my best to answer everyone's questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.